back to the Misfits <laughs> podcast. Rated five stars on iTunes by Thieves Avery. He says, what did the guy with no arms get from Christmas? Gloves. Just kidding. He still hasn't opened it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for that review, Avery. Uh, I am joined today by my co-hosts, Mason, a.k.a. Zuckles. What's going on? Swagger Souls. Hello. Toby on the telly. Hello. And of course, a very special guest. It's the sickest cunt in the room. It's Jay Schlatt. Hello. Welcome yeah. To the Thanks for having me. You're very, very welcome. Very excited. Guys, to our, to our audio listeners, if you're wondering why we sound <laughs> muffled right now, <laughs> or perhaps why there's an abundance of coughing, uh, yes, we have face masks on. A few of us are sick. Um, and honestly, I think we got to take these off, guys. I think we have yeah. to accept our fate. We already yeah. have the coronavirus. There's yeah, no dude. point hiding from it. A mask isn't going to do anything. Mask. Might as well take this thing off. Mask off, guys. We're here, and we're not afraid of this goddamn hysteria. The coronavirus. <coughs> Every day there's something new on Twitter. Every day there's some new complaints, some new fear. Some it is new a lot. scare tactic from a the lot government. Of, a lot it's a lot of hysteria. <laughs> A lot of a lot of theories going around as to you know where it started, mm. what it's gonna mm. do to us, and I mean I think we all know what the real story is. It <sighs> turns you gay. Yeah, it turns you gay. <laughs> it turns you Not only does it turn you gay, but it also kills you mm. if you're oh. particularly old or have any kind of like symptom underlying medical conditions. Because the one thing we don't want is old gays. Right. No. <laughs> sure. And Toby's going to explain exactly why that is right now. <laughs> well, obviously, because <laughs> old gays, uh, they don't absorb the lubricant as much. Okay. And then it's like... It's harder to get erect. Yeah, it's yeah. harder to get erect. Isn't that just because of other issues related with old age, not to do with sexuality? It or It still sucks. It still sucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Guys, it's currently uh, March 13th, for those of you wondering. Um, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Oh, oh sh- yeah. Pretty full oh, man. This is our last day here in LA. Dude, We've been here for the last God. week recording podcasts nonstop with multiple guests. Slap. In like two a day, right? Two a day. Mm-hmm. I'm the last one. We've saved the best for last. You're yeah. supposed to be the first. Dude, I Jay. supposed to be the first for the sleepy fits. I was know? very sleepy fits that day and sleepy I just fits. couldn't. I'm sorry about that. It's all right. He was sitting up here all alone in the podcast. Literally sitting here. I remember getting a text saying, nah, it's being pushed back. And I was like, okay. And I just went back to sleep. I didn't even know you were up here. Yeah. No, it was was just me on the couch. I was considering uh, just doing it myself. How long were you sitting here waiting? I was here. Well, Toby was here. Toby was on the, you know, Uh, he was on the little futon over there. But it was just me kind of just twiddling my thumbs. Mm, Waiting. I'm very sorry for that. to show up and he never... Look, but guys, we saved I was going to host it, but it would have been a mess. No, no, it's we good. We saved the best for last. <laughs> it's good yeah, we no, waited. I mean, it, it worked out because not only have, uh, y- you know, has more time, we've had more time for the, the virus to mm-hmm. to progress and kill more people. So, yeah, this is going to be got, the coronavirus podcast. We've got more news. Yeah, the NBA is Schlatt, NBA's Schlatt gone. really wants to talk about it. He's been wanting really to talk about it. How about we stop interrupting him for a second? <laughs> we let really him talk about it. I could honestly go on for an hour about great. this. Great. It's perfect. so easy. Take the stage. Take it away, Let's man. start with the Great Wall of China. Okay. <laughs> what happened with the Great Wall of China? Well, you know how people used to... Was it, was it the Chinese that built it and then would fling dead bodies out no, to the no, other no. side or was it the, was it the other I'm, people I'm who sure, would, I don't even think it was the great wall I just think that was wall? a that was a tactic of bio warfare people would catapult dead bodies right. that died yeah. of illness into into people's fortresses and keeps and that would spread the illness and kill all of them and they do that in, That's in, fucking in they epic. do that in conjunction the, with a blockade to mm. stop them from getting food and water so they just fucking die and they just go into the castle yeah that makes a lot of sense i mean because it's like you got dead bodies it's basically free ammunition right mm-hmm. i mean what yeah. are you going to do respect the dead and then everybody in the town is like what the fuck just <laughs> was thrown yeah, well, into just a, <laughs> our fortress because the thing is they catapulted it and it would fucking it would land on something land on the yeah. roof and it's going quick so it would splatter and right. break mm-hmm. in half and get everywhere and they had to clean it and it wasn't very sanitary they didn't wash their hands so they all got sick the stench must have been awful yeah, yeah but i mean no one wore deodorant or took baths either so i guess i think people true. were used to bad smells i guess perhaps why did we bring up this uh oh because they're burning bodies yeah, all over China. Yeah. Was it 10,000 they burnt in a all day? All over. Has there been any footage of, like, drone footage from above? Of there has. They like? have, like, infrared, just it's, random it's, hot spots. You're well, it's, it's satellite imagery, so it detected, a, like, a, a sulfuric compound or something that, that usually happens when, like, biomass is burnt. Uh-huh. And they estimated that from all of the signatures, it was like in Wuhan, there was a 
like a giant concentration of this gas that was being emitted, and it was captured on satellite, and they estimated that they had to have burned 10,000 bodies in the last three days to get that amount. You're kidding It's me. a lot of Chinese people that are, that are being burnt right now. So this is, like, truly devastating, though. Yeah. And this is, like, and these are bodies that have died from coronavirus. I'm oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. I mean. I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> I mean, to, you know, just yikes. be burning regular people. But. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, it's getting pretty far. This is, like, plague. This is some plague gang shit. Mm. They banned mm. it in China. They banned They banned, the, they banned play gang. They must be making some money. Yeah. Well, no, dude. I, I feel like if this was a play gang situation, whoever's controlling this shit would be fucked, right? Mm. There's no way he's going to wipe out everybody. Cause no, they, yeah. You have to keep it. Madagascar locked right. down, well, well, dude. Right. Well, explain, ex- <laughs> explain play gank. Sure, sure. So play gank is, is a game where you have a virus. Uh, and you have to evolve it and try and spread it in the fastest, most effective way possible. Mm-hmm. And so everybody knows who's played it that the best way to play is to try and spread it to everybody without them knowing. So it's coughing, like very mild symptoms that yeah. would be in conjunction with the flu. And then once more than three quarters of the world population has it, you go, you just, <laughs> yep. And then yeah. you just make it go, make them go into comas, make them fucking have organ failure. Right. Yeah. And that you kind of the shit. Kill and, and the whole point is to wipe out the entire world, the plague. So wait, are you playing as the virus? Or are you playing mm-hmm. as a person with the virus? You're playing as, as the a virus. virus. Oh, yeah. so, so you're, you're you, you click it. a place to start. Okay. You can make it so that it can adapt to survive in water, in air, whether okay. or not it spreads through air. Whether it's a parasite, bacterial, viral, or they have what like, like like nano machines that were yeah bio like little and, fucking tiny yeah. robots it's, that, it's that pretty, can it's that pretty have a cool. kill switch in them. It's yeah, pretty it's cool. cool. It's a good it's little a cool simulation game. strategy game. You can yeah. uh, you can upgrade your virus, get a stat boost. Yeah, you literally stuff. can. Oh my yeah. god! You know. And I mean, what I'm saying is the problem with whoever's controlling this thing, Chinese government, <laughs> not not nothing against them, of course, but uh, you know they're they're. They already let the world know that this thing exists. <coughs> They're already that, working on the cure, dude. Yeah. You got to click on the little, uh, yeah, little flash. Someone's, someone's got to start popping the bubbles, man. Mm-hmm. The wow. little blue bubbles, the beakers. So what are your actual thoughts on, on things? Like My the current thoughts? update on the 13th of March, how do you feel about the sure. coronavirus? Do you think it's a lot of it's hysteria still or are you, are you like actually getting concerned? I think a lot of it's hysteria, but at the same time, you know, it, it does seem to be able to kill especially older people and mm. you know i'm no we all have people we know who sure. are at risk here mm-hmm. so I'm, th- I'm not taking it lightly yeah at the same time you know this thing wuhan is uh they they have factories there they deal with the bio biomass like they have 100 percent. like this is it's it's it came out of a factory, man. Do you think this was generated oh, 100%. artificially? I don't think it was. I don't think it was generated artificially. They had a. It was like a animal testing facility that was 280 meters away from the epicenter of the outbreak in Wuhan, uh-huh. and they said there was a. It's hard to believe what's bullshit and what's a conspiracy theory and yeah. what's bullshit online, but there are reports of scientists that say they worked at the lab and they were dealing with infected bats. Infected and that bats. and that it was it jumped from the bat to people because they had terrible safety standards and they were urinated on by the bats. They but, were bled on by the bats, they yeah. were bitten by them. Wasn't there something about the bats being used as like some kind of fancy soup? Cuisine? Soup. soup. Yeah. Bat I, soup. I, I heard that's complete bullshit and <sighs> isn't a thing. What, yeah, bat well, soup? I don't know. I heard that that is not at all how Yeah, but where did you just hear that? I don't know. Someone on Twitter. <laughs> someone someone was, on Twitter. Must have seen that on Reddit. Like, someone was talking about how uh, there, there are just people that are like blaming it on the Chinese people consuming this bat soup when in reality it was nothing to do with it. I don't a, know. There's a lot of theories kicking around. I was in an Uber the other night and my Uber driver was telling me that like it was all simply a big government distraction to distract from the fact that the US has just signed some kind of peace treaty with Syria, I want to say. I don't know if that's. I, if, I have no he, idea. He could have been on crack cocaine. I was just kind of like. He was. You don't let you get, never, never, never read. I, I, well, I wasn't a. I, I'm not saying I believe him. I was I'm, say. I'm more just saying that there's a lot of different things kicking around in terms of uh, oh, what yeah. people Every, think is going on. Everybody thinks they know what happened. Well, nobody hear about any of the happened. protests that are going on anymore. It's just the virus, man. It's just all about the virus. I think his main point was like, yeah, this is 
in the forefront of everyone's mind and no one's really paying attention to anything else. Exactly. Uh, which is definitely... It's just a diversion tactic. Perhaps. To distract you from what's really going on. Exactly, you know? man. The man is behind all of this. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would like to believe that it's simply just a bit of a flu. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. I wonder if it's going to recirculate, if it's always going to be a thing that we're going to deal with. I don't, I don't. It might be. I really see this going away. And is Maybe. it going to evolve like the flu does every year? Well, they say heat kills it, right? Heat? Hmm? heat. It's dream- like, like warm temperatures and really cold temperatures kill it off, apparently. Summer or winter. Just just wait six months, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm betting that by the time this podcast comes out, the, it'll be mostly died down or maybe it would be worse know. than ever it'll be know. very interesting it might be it? worse than ever yeah it's stock very, market great depression levels yeah it's gonna be a couple months before it, it starts dying down i think mm. and so as long as we get it out before then you know we're fine we're, we'll we're see good. it could be a year slack you never know <laughs> we are the misfits after all that's true um, that's true but i remember shit like ebola right like yeah i was in new york city when that was happening and everybody thought that was going to be the end of the world but it turns out you have to like do a fucking ritual dance and <laughs> share blood to to have that affect you. Right. And so one person took it to America and no one else got it. Wait, what is this ritual dance and blood thing? Oh, I don't know. Whatever they, <laughs> it's whatever just really it's really hard to get it. Right. Yeah. Ebola. Yeah. You have yeah. to like have their blood go through an open wound mm-hmm. or something like that. <laughs> so that was, you know, it's not all what what it was talked up yeah, to be. Ebola doesn't have a two to 14 day incubation period where you're still infectious. Mm. Right. Which is the problem. Right. Really. Yeah. Cause you could walk around and be infecting like 20, 30 people a day for a week. Yeah, and you have no idea. Have it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, our joke has been that, you know, since the coronavirus thing has happened right when we arrived in LA, that we've just been infecting slowly, like all the YouTubers that we've had on this yep. podcast and they're now going to their groups and infecting them. Although, oh, dude, it'd be so funny if every <laughs> fucking YouTuber yeah. in if LA... If we gave every YouTuber yeah. coronavirus. I mean, it's a story. That would be a story. Every YouTuber that happens to have been on our podcast just starts <laughs> dying off. <laughs> <laughs> um, how has your time in LA been? So, I mean, it's been good. It's been good. I mean, we, we are chilling up in the Hollywood Hills. I can't really complain. It's plenty of snacks. I feel, I feel like I'm pretty well taken care of with yeah. you guys. Mm, cool. And... Uh, yeah, it's a fun time. We had an interesting night last night, didn't we? We did. Ooh. I made some money last <laughs> night. Yeah? Yeah. How much? Yeah. A good $3,000. What? It yeah. was the long con, Toby. All right, $3,000. Let us I'll know how, to, how you made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, sure. So out of the out of the mind vice of manager Ryan P, <laughs> he comes up with this game, this hilarious. <laughs> I mean, like, this is just the best game of all time. It's called Pick the Pocket. Pick the Pocket. Pick the Pocket, dude. Pick the pocket. Let's go. Okay. You've got... You know, we've got shitty Jeopardy music playing on the Chromecast. <laughs> it, in the was, back. it was, uh, do you want to be a millionaire? Yeah, who wants whatever. to be a millionaire? Yep. And so one of us has, someone's got a tactical fucking yeah, like, vest, yeah. right? And it's got seven different pockets on it. Yep. And so the idea is you put some kind of paraphernalia in all the pockets, mm. and then the contestant has to pick. And they yeah, smoke one or, pocket or has a cash whatever. prize. One pocket has yeah. a cash prize, and the rest have various levels be, of weed yeah, consumables. It could be a joint, or it could be a, a, a big joint with, with keef and oil, or it could just be a gram of wax, or, or, an or edible. it could be a thousand milligrams of edibles. Yes, could be dangerous and that's game. That's the gamble, and honestly, an honestly dangerous game that I was very nervous to play because mm-hmm. <laughs> if I got that thousand milligram, then whew, it would be bad. Yeah. But and so, yeah, and so every night, you know, me and Swagger would be playing pool, and he just, you know, he's got a joint, and, and I go, you and I, and I, and I, right? Yeah, I go, <laughs> you can only say no to that so many times <laughs> until the point where it's like, fuck it, right? Yeah, yeah sure. I, I was pretty much peer pressuring you under the guise <laughs> of irony. Yeah, <laughs> but it's fine because because Swagger was like, "What's your actual number? Like a dollar?" Because I told him, I go, "What would your hypothetical amount be to yeah. like participate in the game?" Where right. you could even win a cash prize and not even have it, just to participate in the mm-hmm. gamble. Because like, it's not like how much money do I have to pay you to smoke weed. It's how much money do I have to pay you to take the risk between smoking a joint or having a thousand milligram edible or just getting money. 
You know? Right. Because yeah. I thought it would be interesting to put a price tag on that rotation. <sighs> it's, like, it's like buying a CSGO case. So you let, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You let the businessman know exactly how much demand there was for him to do this. And he figured out that, mm-hmm. oh, I could actually make a profit of this. Because yeah. <laughs> he told me to say a number. And I said, $5,000. Is $5,000 reasonable? Yeah. To which he replied, Yes. <laughs> yes, of course it's reasonable. And then the next night I asked him again when we were going to do pick a pocket and I said, "You know, is $5,000 really your, your minimum?" <laughs> and I, and uh, I yes, like, reverse I was negotiation. Like, I said, "You know, I think maybe $3,000 would be more fair." He, you know, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, I think so." I go, "Man, even 2500 would be more reasonable." And I was like, "Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> I yeah. Guess. You're yeah, getting yeah, pretty sure, low, but okay." Enough. But you know, so we stopped at twenty five hundred, and mm-hmm. and then I, I I guess we shook on it. Well, yeah. And then I was brought into the discussion because Swag is like, I don't really want to pay twenty five hundred. He's like, Fitz, <laughs> surely you chip in for the twenty five hundred. Well, no, because I went to Ryan and I said, dude, I'm not doing twenty five hundred fucking dollars yeah. just to schlad. Yeah. I go, I need I need you to pitch in too. He goes, if you get me, if you get me two more people to pitch in, I'll do it. And I said, all right. And then I went to Fitz and I said, Fitz pay up and he said okay and i said <laughs> ryan i can't find a fourth and he said it's fine we'll split it three ways yeah so to which we didn't split three ways because your paypal was locked and yeah. you couldn't pay him so i had to pay him 900 and then ryan had to pay him 1600 so i still haven't actually paid anything uh, <laughs> yeah, for this so. but i will guys you owe me 900 i will and you know what's going to help with that Gamer subs. You say it, say it, say it. Code Misfits. Twenty percent off. Code Misfits.gg. It's probably still twenty percent off. It's yeah. gotta it's be twenty. Is it changing? Off. Are they uh, it's well it's 50, normally ten percent? Yeah, it's normally ten, oh. but it's twenty for the time being. If you're wow. lucky, it might be twenty percent off again. Hey man, just check, just check. Yeah. Just check. Figure it out, guys. Just check. Thank you for supporting the podcast, Gamer Subs. Anyway, mm. back to pick a pocket. Yeah. So I picked the pocket and I won the five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> as <laughs> well as, as well, a joint. Because we weren't gonna joint. let you get off that yeah, fucking easy. We just paid you paid twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> you got to see yeah. you smoke some weed. Well, the rest of us like a, a couple other rounds of pick a pocket happened first, right? Yeah, so yeah, you did. We were we were gathered around on the couches, like everyone was either already stoned or just kind of fucked and tired. So we had this very sleepy stoner audience just gather around this <laughs> L-shaped couch. Well, a very like energetic Ryan P, and uh, like you were fully kitted out in yeah. what you're wearing currently with a vest on top and um, a helmet and helmet, oh, of course. Uh, we we're filming, and I think like Mitchell was like switching between various yep. music on the Mitchell TV. Mitchell had the Chromecast and the fucking camera. Yeah, at the so, same time. Yeah. So he'd be playing like "Who Wants to Be a Millionaire" theme while Ryan's talking, and then quickly switch it to like intense music. Yeah, we did "Fun of Friend" where you face yes. down Travis. So, yeah. oh yeah, for so for my for my uh, pick a pocket round, I go up there of course, and I shake Swig's hand, and it's very exciting, a little awkward, you know, but <laughs> but it was fine. Um, and I just couldn't pick a pocket. I just couldn't decide which one to pick. Yeah. Uh, and I just had to phone a friend. So they all looked very enticing. They did look they very enticing. They all looked the same. Yeah. So I whip out my iPhone <laughs> and I, uh, who do I call? But my very good friend, Travis, I who FaceTime is, him. Who was literally on the couch. It was literally and five. standing right there. He was five meters away from yeah. me, but I just felt like I needed to call him. So I called Travis. He's like, Hey buddy, what do you need? I'm like, Travis, I, I need your help. I can I just simply cannot pick a pocket on my own. <laughs> He's like, okay, I got you. Number four. Okay, yeah. so of course Travis is giving me the, the pocket. I pick number four. No, no, no. You forget when, when you hung up after the FaceTime and have the, already decided number four, Travis goes, three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that. He just says three. Immediate confusion. I'm like, oh, do I go with his original choice? He's now telling me three. I decided to go with what he told me on the phone because it was phone a friend. Yeah. Pick number four. And what comes out of the pocket? But a very, very, very spicy like blunt gloss tip blunt mm. uh yeah, just wrapped in keef I, i'm sure they had the little resin there. dabs on it resin dabs on yeah. yeah it was just an absolute beast of a boy yeah, you had um, to smoke the whole thing and i had to smoke well. the whole That's thing, the thing. Myself. whatever you get you have to consume the entirety of yeah Fuck. You, know, you can't pass that shit on Fuck that, which that, might be dude. explaining why my cough is so much worse today <laughs> um but you know it was it's pick a pocket i, I made the rules yeah, i gotta play I took it. I took my seat in the chair there in the audience, and I lit the blunt, and I smoked it, and I watched the rest of the show. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I mean, Slats round, I guess, could yeah. happen next. Yeah. How was how was your joint experience? How was how was smoking <sighs> marijuana for the first time, Schlatt? I think it was all right. <laughs> um, you didn't really seem too phased at all. Like no, you know. I think did. You I, have to smoke the whole joint. I s- yeah, like maybe ten to twelve hits over the period of over three hours. Hour. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, it was it was more than it was more than. Yeah, hour, it was like yeah. two, three hours. 
where yeah. you were just kind of testing the waters. Definitely right. enough for like a first time user to get high, you know, yeah. like, get yeah. like pretty high. Would it, you say that you got stoned? Because for a while yeah. you were like, yeah. I'm not feeling anything, man. And I was right. like, you should have some more. And I think when, while we were playing pick the pocket, I, I guess I didn't get the, the inhalation right. Or yeah, or you, you Elon Musk at the beginning with you kind of just right. got the smoke in your mouth and blew yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. And so I didn't do it right. And so for like 45 minutes afterwards, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> just <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I just, point, all maybe. I feel like is I just made $3,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, just yeah, riding yeah. that high. <laughs> and then we're playing pool and Swagger's you know, key area. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, you have to fill your mouth with smoke. And they go, yeah. <gasps> like that, and yeah. just inhale it. And then hold, I, I made them hold it, which mm. is like the, the easiest way. It really right. doesn't do anything. It the more do you anything. hold it, it you, you get two seconds, and then it's all yeah. in there. But it's just good for people that haven't smoked before to... And then holding it in makes it so they're actually putting it in their lungs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you did end up getting a little bit high. How would you describe the feeling? I don't know how I'd describe. I mean, it was. I think it was enjoyable. Yeah. Like I've I've never been opposed to it, right? Sure. Like it's just the fact that I had never done it or just wasn't interested in it was purely because of who I grew up around mm -hmm. and like what I just enjoyed doing, like sitting at home playing Xbox and shit. Like I grew up around, grew up in the in you know the computer club, right? Yeah. I was making robots and shit and just wasn't around that kind of culture it's funny because like the stoner culture is very much all about sitting around and playing xbox too so yeah. <laughs> it kind of yeah. works out well um, you get high and make a robot i'm sure yeah sure well, maybe i mean yeah it's obviously one of those things that you just like you weren't opposed to it was just something you yeah. just had never been introduced to before right and so this was your introduction and i guess twenty five hundred three thousand dollars which is pretty good incentive i'd say honestly i wish i got paid that much to smoke weed that's ridiculous yeah. that was yeah. in the, the long con dude that was if, long I, yeah, if i if i so now from now on if i go quieres would you maybe go yeah, i consider ooh, see senor yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, you, what does cool. quieres mean? Want some? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a it's like a meme that yeah, we're probably like, overusing. It's like, the, it's like the little <laughs> Labrador puppy, the golden retriever puppy, and it, and yeah. it has the hand. It, it goes whoosh. Quieres? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You use Facebook, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I saw it right underneath my grandma's minion meme. <laughs> it anyway, really it was really cool. It was like, yeah. oh, if I had a cent for every time I wanted chocolate, I'd have a million dollars. And then it was like a minion going like that's so funny, chilling in a hot oh. tub with some money. Grand Grand, always with the good memes. Dude. Comedy dude, legend. Granny. Comedy legend. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it lasted for a couple hours. And uh, I sat down by the television and we watched uh, some Japanese dude make knives for that's right. the <laughs> yep. better part of the night. That's right. And then you ordered ice cream. I did. How did I the ice saw cream you got ice cream. And then I'm like, fuck, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, I could go for some ice cream right now. Mm -hmm. And I got some ice cream and... Do you think it tasted better because you were high, or did you not really notice the difference? I mean, I never had the flavor before. Uh, okay. Mm. Did it taste good though? Yeah, it was hit good. The, the it was enjoyable. Yeah, I watched slightly it. Slightly more it enjoyable than night. than average. <laughs> well, Maybe. the re the reason I ask is because food tends to taste pretty insane, especially when you're new to weed. Like, yeah, I remember when I first started smoking, like, food was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's weird. When <laughs> when my friend from college first started smoking weed, he. Uh, he would get really high and then look through his cupboard and see what snacks he could make out of what he had. He had saltine crackers and Dijon mustard, <laughs> oh, and he God. said it tasted amazing. <laughs> and he said it was oh, the shit. best thing he probably ever had in a while. <laughs> and then he, the very next day, while he was sober, he made the same exact snack, ate it, and immediately <laughs> spit it out. He said, what the <laughs> fuck? I ate like 16 of these last night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were fucking terrible. It's the only way you can enjoy shapes. Shapes. <laughs> shapes. I don't know. You went through a whole fucking pack. Of I them. did. Yeah. I don't want to go through the spiel again. I mean, well, what is what's your opposition to shapes? Why do you My hate opposition them so to much? Shapes is just they're they're like, I don't know. They, they were all that was there in Australia, and just, it was I was just surrounded by <laughs> mediocre food, and this was just another thing that was there, and mm. I was hungry. You know. Just to the audience at home, we're not actually just talking about geometry here. We're talking about a very popular <laughs> yeah. Australian snack called shapes. Yeah, There's yeah. like a little cracker with some yeah. flavor on it. And every shape is a different flavor. Exactly. And a different shape. Exactly. And Schlatt yeah. kind of had some kind of affinity, some strange affinity with yeah, shapes well, when he visited us in Melbourne. It just fucking pissed me off, dude. I love-hate relationship, like, perhaps. The size of the box is like... You feel like an absolute pussy if you don't eat all of the shapes in there. Right. But, but it's a lot. You feel awful at the end. It's it is, a it's, lot it's, it's of shapes. It's just it's big enough amount. for you yeah. to think, I can do this on my own. Yeah. And they're crackers as well. So, like, they're pretty dense. They fill you up. Yeah, they're really yeah. small. Yeah. 
So no more shapes for slap. No more shapes. Is I mean, the, I'm not going to lie. The knife videos were kind of hitting a little different. Yeah? I mm -hmm. usually enjoy them. Like, I, I've been watching the channel for a while. Mm -hmm. Kiwami Japan. Yeah. yeah. I, ju I yeah. saw you squinting. Squinting at the fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to like... figure out. Because he does weird shit to make the knives. I'm like, what is... Is, he, is, is that a cow with water <laughs> coming out of it? <laughs> yeah, a puzzle. Okay, well, I mean, so yeah, it was your first time. Yeah. You got it out of the way. You made three grand. Pretty good. Made three grand. Well, Schlag, for the listeners at home sure. that aren't familiar with you, would you like to give a little bit of a brief history? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Schlatt. Hey, guys. I hey. used to, uh, well, I got my start making YouTube videos in around sixth grade. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, I was, I was big into Freddie W., Quarter Digital, those guys. And, uh, you know, that's that Quarter Digital is really the only channel that I've continued to watch consistently. Same. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, me and my buds would run around our, our house or our school and just do do finger guns and do a little recoil and we pop it into mm -hmm. Windows Movie Maker and add like a single frame of a muzzle flare. <laughs> and it had the, we didn't know how to like remove the black. So it would just be finger gun and then just a black square <laughs> with a muzzle flare on it. And nice. we'd add in some, you know, laser sound effect or something. And, uh. That's you cool. know, I did that for a couple of years and I got 38 subscribers and I was Epic. like, hey, maybe, yeah. you know, maybe I should move into gaming because <laughs> I was a fan of KYR Speedy and, and Vanos and them. And so mm. as I was getting into high school, I made the transition into more gaming stuff. And then uh, so you're, make, say, you're making gaming content in uh, high school. Or yeah. Just, yeah. So it, it kind of changed every grade. So I want to say ninth grade, which is freshman year. Um, I was into gaming funny moments, so like GTA 5 was in full swing mm -hmm. and kind of had a resurgence at this point, uh, but GTA 5 was in full swing, so I was doing that, uh, funny moments, some subtitles here and there, and uh, 10th grade was when the montage parodies were starting, so okay. dudes like Pyrocynical, yep. No Fuckers, those guys, and mm -hmm. I kind of followed snipers. suit. Yeah, Snipers, Snipers too. is my snipers. fucking favorite. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was fun. Um, and I followed suit again in like 2016, 11th grade with commentary. Okay. Um, and then in 12th grade, senior year, I, I kind of moved into more, I guess, thoughtful, intellectual stuff. So I would write a script, talk about, you know, a certain game or, or, right. or TV show or something. More essay style content. Would you yeah. Say? Yeah. More essay style right. stuff. Mm. Um, and so I, I continued to do that, uh, for the better part of a year or two. Um, and on the side, I do a weekly, uh, live stream of me playing a, you know, whether it's roller coaster tycoon or open TTD, which are really old, you know, like transportation games from mm -hmm. the nineties. Boomer games. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty it's much. Still boomer very games. Fun games. Yeah. yeah. But they, they really do hold up. Mm -hmm. And so, um, every week I do this live stream and I realized I was pretty good at it. You know, like it was a, it was a good source of income. I was working it for like you know, 10 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And I'd realized that, Hey, I could do this. I could do one or two streams in a month and make more than I'd make an entire week of, of, uh, work in the shitty job yeah. where I just pick up the phone and, and have to go across campus to, uh, turn off a computer and right. turn it back on. And you were streaming on Twitch or did you, be, <laughs> Fuck did that. you start yeah. on YouTube? For uh, this was on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, this was on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, um, I got an opportunity with Carson who reached out to me and said, Hey, we're, you know, we're doing a Minecraft server. This was exactly, this is pretty much exactly a year ago at this point. Yeah. Um, and how did he find you? Do you think? He I don't know. Stumbled upon you know. and sent your DM or he DM'd me and I had never spoken to him before. Hmm. Minecraft. Well, cause I had made a video called a tribute to Minecraft, uh, I see. which is basically this, you know, essay of how I grew up with Minecraft and how, you know, the game is changing and, you know, our lives are changing. Some that was your shit. video? Yeah, it was my video. Oh, yeah, shit. That. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Because that video uh, blew up a fair bit, didn't it? It did. Yeah, yeah. Notch saw it. Notch retweeted it right. while I was yeah. sitting at my fucking desk IT job. And Jesus. I was like, yeah. I watched that video a while ago. You had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, it was me, dude. Hey, man. Good video. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so as I was doing that and the stream was growing on the side mm -hmm. and I got this opportunity for a live streamed Minecraft server, the stars kind of aligned. And yeah. so I was like, fuck it, you know, I'm going to move to Twitch. I'm going to make a little live stream highlights channel. And uh, it turned out to be a pretty good decision. Definitely. Yeah, I can remember uh, seeing your live streams from like way back uh, mm -hmm. early. I think 
I don't know. I, I remember, you would have had less than a thousand subs when I started watching you on Twitch. Yeah. Um, and just, I remember thinking like, okay, Schlatt's got the goods. Like mm. you were just very good at running the live stream and keeping it moving. Yeah. Like it didn't feel like you were fast paced, like trying to reach for content all the time. It was just this very relaxed, like calm, pretty confident vibe. Thank you. Thank very you. good at just talking, very peaceful content. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I see it as, you know, I was doing this shit since sixth grade. Yeah. So like everything I had done up to that point, I was, I was, I was pretty well established. I guess I had like a hundred thousand subs about yeah. a year ago. Yeah. Um, and when this happened, I think, you know, it's a great opportunity and I was prepared for it. Mm. And so it kind of just, just worked out. That's How many great. subs are you at now? Uh, about to hit 600,000. Damn. On the, on the live stream highlights channel and, you know, 500 on the main channel at this point. And mm. I have a Call of Duty commentary channel. You that's do got, the, the Weekly Slap, yeah, right? Yeah, the it's called slap. The Weekly Slap, which is basically me, you know, hearkening back to the old school Call of Duty days, like mm. scene enters and Woody's Gamer Tag <coughs> yeah. and shit. And, yeah. uh, you know, fill in a spot that hasn't really been, been filled in a while. Mm, I, yeah, that kind of content is so precious, I think, on YouTube. Yeah. It's, tr yeah, it's kind of real. a dying art now. Yeah, it's it is. Cool and, it's that, uh, and it's all because of what YouTube like wants to see now. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. I think I think if I could have made a living doing what I was doing on the main channel with like more thoughtful stuff, I would have. Yeah. Um, but it's just so obvious, like what YouTube wants to see. Uh, they want you to shit out, you know, long 10 minute plus videos frequently yeah uh and so it, you know it, it kind of makes sense to to do that yeah well i guess the good thing about like having a side project like the weekly slap is mm -hmm. that it is a side project and you yeah don't actually do it every week yeah but, no uh, no i don't <laughs> but you know monthly slap at this yeah point. but even yeah. though youtube doesn't necessarily want to promote that kind of content it's pretty uh you know it's pretty easy to make it's a sit down commentary yeah. video i'm sure you put yeah, thought sure. into what you're saying but like you know, it's not like you have to edit a whole bunch or anything right. like that. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good side project. Yeah. Pretty fulfilling. I yeah. mean, I'd say it's one of the favorite things I do. Yeah. Cool. I can kind of sense that as well. And the comment section definitely appreciates it. Like when I yeah. look through the comments on that channel, everyone's like, man, I'm so glad that you, you do these videos. I think it helps a lot of people. So right on Schlab. Right on. Um, let's talk about, uh, like lunch club and how, Oh sure. Like, yeah. How like this sort of came about and, and so, everything. As uh, as SMP Live, which was the Minecraft server we were on about a year ago, uh, continued to grow, um, there were just talks of, you know, hey, let's start a group or, or at least a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so at this point, the Goopcast is what it was called. And it yeah. was just a, basically a revolving door of some of the characters from SMP Live um, that would come in and just shoot the shit for an hour and, and you know, and have a good time. Yeah. And, and so I was introduced to these guys through SMP Live. And, and so I uh, got on a few podcasts. And at, at some point, it, it evolved into a more defined group. Yeah. Um, and it took a very long time for that to happen. Uh, but, you know, we're finally, you know, a year <coughs> later, we're finally. Uh, was that a difficult process to get a refined group? Because how many people were there? rotating in and out of the goop there was a good 10 or 15 i mean yeah it, it and it i f i felt a little detached from it because i was i was only introduced to these guys from smp live um and so i felt like i was removed from the situation and not really in control of like who is who is a part of it or not um mm -hmm. you felt like the new guy I mean, or, yeah, yeah yeah i felt like i was the new guy right. and i was for for a bit but now I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable with these guys. And yeah, no, you guys have great chemistry. Yeah. Um, um, with SMP Live, I mean, that's kind of how we met as well, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, initially was yeah. through this insane server, which really took off on Twitch and got this insanely strong community behind it. Yeah. Um, what was it like sort of being there from the early days and watching that grow? Like, how do you feel about SMP Live now? Man, it was such a crazy, like, I think the timeline of it just worked so well. Yeah. Because everyone was, I, I think Minecraft was due for another rebound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with a tribute to Minecraft, not to, you know, suck my own cock here, but, <laughs> you know, if you look at Google Trends, mm. the month where a tribute to Minecraft came out is like yeah. where Minecraft 
Started, to started going back up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's all me, dude. It's all <laughs> fucking me. It's fine. I take 100% credit for, <laughs> for the revive of Minecraft. I, I mean, honestly, you're, you're joking around, but it very well could have planted a seed in a lot of people's minds. Like, oh, yeah, Minecraft is a great game. Like, yeah. let's go back to it. Yeah. And then you saw things following after it, like the... Um, the PewDiePie's entire series. Oh, PewDiePie's oh, series. And, of course, uh, Keemstar's... Uh, Minecraft Monday mm-hmm. tournament, which was Minecraft a very course, course. interesting little thing, and I mean, yeah, SMP Live, like uh, obviously yeah. started a bit before that, and um, was massive for it as well. Yeah, explain what SMP Live is, I guess, to people at home who might sure, not be aware. Sure, yeah. So SMP Live was a Minecraft server where if you were playing on it, you had to be live streaming. So this led to, uh, I, I think, it, I think it just kind of worked out because live streaming was has been on the come up for a while with like people like ninja streaming with so, fucking drake yeah. on fortnite like people yeah. people finally knew what live streaming was and were kind of catching on to the idea of it mm. and so the fact that minecraft is coming back but it's in this new fresh format and not you know in 500 part let's plays yeah. and instead you know you you see everything too yeah. right like a Minecraft video would typically be like, okay, guys, you know, I, I spent some time just mining, right? And now I'm back and we're actually going to do something. But you actually get, you see the whole process, right? Yeah. And so it's, right. it's very real. And I th- the great thing about Minecraft is that it's a great social game and it's also a great casual game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you're live streaming it, you can have this great social content where you're improv or you're riffing off each other and like you're yeah. trying to... I don't know, make bits and things like that. But you can also just go in a cave with some chill music on and hang out with your chat, and it's very enjoyable to watch as well. So it's like this great balance of like, you were able to, you know, keep the content going for a long time because it could be high energy, it could be low energy, and it's still still Minecraft at the end of the day. One of the coolest parts about SP Live was uh, like the highlight videos people would make, Mm -hmm. where it was like jumping, it was like, this is what happened on SP Live today. And it's like, you know, yeah. you'd see everyone's perspective of, like, mm. the pranks that were happening yep. and all that. And it was so fun, it's, uh, like, just witnessing all that. When season two? <laughs> That's not up to me. I mean, well, I'd, Cooper, I'd like to Cooper's see Cooper's over there on the couch shaking his head shaking vigorously. His head. <laughs> his hair is practically It was horizontal. Cooper's idea. Really? It was Cooper's idea in the, the first entire place server. to start, yeah, to start wow. an SMP. And Carson was like, yeah, no, it's probably not going to work. But so so why not work. a second season? Why why end the first and never let it come back? Well, I don't know. Let's figure out why it ended kind of in the first place, I guess. Well, I think it ended because of, partly because of the reason it got popular in the first place, is that there was a lot of different people in the server, Yeah. Um, and they all played in very different ways. And so part of the draw of it in the first place was, I can watch Schlatt pretend to scam people and make a fake cryptocurrency called Schlatt coin. Or I could watch this dude who is, you know, building the statue of David. Yeah. You know, mm. there's a lot of different things going on. I'm, I mostly just fucked around. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of people who took it pretty seriously. Right. Um, and I guess to a certain point, um, it got a little too big. Um, there's a, there was bunch of different people that i guess towards the end i wasn't even really familiar with yeah and a um, lot of conflicting ideas as to how the server should be run or yeah the should also be, it just didn't feel as familiar anymore you yeah. know as it grew and as mm. you know as i was still in my little alcove of just not building anything and mm. just doing bits you yeah. know there was this fucking city emerging and yeah. i felt i felt less and less part of it how many how many people were 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 on smp live at the end it would have been a few hundred right yeah a it was, few it hundred? was a, one or two hundred people mm. at the end mm. yeah. which is crazy because like That's at peak times there was like 100 people on the server oh, peak right. time, and uh, at peak times i'd say you know there's probably 10 or 20 oh really yeah it, uh. like the average was like five or ten oh, okay say. on at once but there on were a once, lot of people yeah. coming in and coming out mm-hmm. constantly um yeah I, I remember watching and i think kind of jumping into one of the later streams um where it was you and carson uh and you were trying to run for mayor oh yeah mm. um we kind of just shoehorned <laughs> ourselves in we, we we announced to the server that hey we are going to have a presidential election yeah but uh <laughs> it's only going to be schlatt at the debates and you can only <laughs> vote you can only vote for schlatt um and it was all you know at the end of the day it was all just a plot to sell merch so yeah <laughs> the so schlatt we, 2020 merch right? yeah, yeah so we got the job done which and, and that schlatt 2020 merch is more meta than ever dude yeah like yeah that dude shit, everybody's everybody's going crazy about the election right now 
And so it's it's the perfect time to capitalize. Dude, you know? I'll be a running mate. <laughs> Schwag Let's do it. Swagger 2020. Let's fucking do it, man. <laughs> I've 100%. got my. I'm going to sh- kill you as you go into office after the first <laughs> year. So that way, no one's too suspicious, and then I'll right. be the president. Right. I've got my Schlatt 2020 mug at home and my hat as well. I wear them proudly. Yeah, that stream was very uh, funny because it was like you guys sort of were just like you just decided that you were going to be mayor. Oh yeah, and <laughs> but people didn't like people it. People did not. Like people it. were not on the same page, really? and that's the thing. Like, there's a bunch of different ways people play on the server. Yeah. And so, you know, our buddy Josh was like what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And then, and then he's, he's like into government and shit. Mm. And, you know, he's big into American history and this kind of stuff. And so, you know, Schlad comes in and he's like, hey, uh, I'm going to be the president. You have to vote for me. And he's like, no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to log off and stop my stream. <laughs> and everybody on Twitter was like, what the fuck are these assholes doing? Fucking yeah. Schlad and Carson ruining SMP Live. You know? Yeah. What? You're was there a lot of, fun. was there a lot of drama? No, no, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody was still on the same, the same general page. Yeah, you just, we at, just at, the, at the end of the fucking day, you just sit in your room playing Minecraft, yeah. drinking Red Bull, yeah. or GamerSubs. Or GamerSubs.gg, <laughs> Gamer Code Misfits. The better choice. Um, I'll tell you what, I could go with GamerSubs. You reckon? Yeah, I'm fucked. Yeah, you look pretty tired, mate. You, you, you ain't quite a few. <laughs> nah, you're a- sick, mate. I'm not sick, I don't trust. Dog. I don't trust you, anyone. You sound sicker than me. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't trust anyone, mate. Did you ever munch on any edibles dude. last night, Surely. mate? Huh? Did you ever munch on any edibles last night, mate? Yeah. Yeah. You look pretty fucking high right now. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go get a drink of water, mate? Yeah, go, yeah, go yeah. Go grab yourself a game of subs. I'll get know? a game of subs. Yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> BRB. <laughs> AFK. AFK. He's going AFK. Um, so, do you think you would... I mean... I I didn't watch a lot of SMP Live, but I watched a lot of highlights and shit on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I see on Twitter constantly rumors that it would come back. So it is 100% verified. Will never come back. No, it's never coming back. Well, I, anything. You know what? Well, anything. I don't want to completely close the door on it. Yeah, you don't want to close the door on it. I don't. Because you, you want to do it again, I'm sure. Because it got a fuck ton of views. It was you. such a beautiful thing, wasn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. when it worked... It was magic. Surely launch a season two and have people vote for 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 people to, to gain entry. And then you Cooper. Can, <laughs> Cooper's over there cringing. <laughs> no, th- but then what if you did it like a thing where people were voted off of S P Live? <laughs> <laughs> like oh dude twitch yeah, chat yeah. votes like, people imagine, out imagine twitch like like the actual audience and community they do you guys do a weekly poll then after a week somebody leaves the island you do like a massive island yeah. or something they're amazing it could be so dramatic and oh dude it could be so good there you go Coop. now he's smiling and nodding <laughs> he's smiling yeah, he's giving <laughs> thumbs hey, up he's it. just trying to get you to shut the fuck up <laughs> like, dude season two Look, season two i think that minecraft is not going to go away you no, know, like no, it's, it's definitely, definitely not going anywhere. It's back in its little lull right now, but it'll come back. And I'm sure when that happens that uh, there'll be some kind of creative idea that will come out of it. Yeah. And it'll involve Twitch and it'll involve yeah. some kind of community. But yeah, I mean, we, we don't know what that looks like. Yeah. We don't want to promise that they're going to bring it back oh, anytime dude, soon. You dude, know, it's, yeah, I don't know. Cooper's over there giving two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now they're thumbs down. Now they're thumbs down. Now we'll just have to see uh, when the timing's right, I guess. Because you yeah. don't want to rush back into things. Following SMP Live, um, you also had this idea to begin a Take It series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which man. Which I was very interested in because I was a huge Take It fan growing right. up. Right. The um, Yogg's cast. The Yogg's cast. Yep. Yogg's we, cast. We shared quite a common, I think, interest in the Yogg's cast. Mm-hmm. Like, take it serious. Shadow yeah. with teenagers. And what was a lot different about that server that we did was that it was a, it was a lot of, like, actual, you know, here's the game plan. Here's what we want to do today. Because it was so much like, you know, we were, we were huge fans of, of uh, the old school Tech It series that the Yogg's cast used to do. And that was just crazy shit, but like yeah. it was well, clear that role they, play and it's yeah, yeah, it's scripted. all role play. You it's know, all here's what we're gonna do. You know, here's you, the general you, you idea. You script the general idea, yeah, and then you fill in the blanks with improv. Yeah, yeah, we're and just so. It, it, what, what were the what's some crazy shit that happened? Like, well, well let's just explain. Like, first of all, what Tech It is. Um, we've talked about oh, it quite right. a few times on the podcast, but Tech It is basically a mod pack from Minecraft, which adds a bunch of different mods. A lot of them uh, revolving around industry and mm-hmm. like uh, machines. And automation. So, like, right. you can basically build machines using insane crafting recipes that uh, may allow you, uh, Minecraft to be played for you. Yeah, so you could build a quarry that mines out a shit ton of shit, and then yep. you could take that shit and then 
get pipes to take that shit yep. and put it into a furnace or a macerator that mm. grinds up the shit into multiple small shit particulates. And then you smelt the shit. You smelt the shit and double the ore. Double the ore. So yeah. it was just this really fun way to make Minecraft exciting again. You yeah. can see things going through pipes. It's, it's crazy. Um, buggy as hell though. Buggy as hell. Super buggy. buggy as hell. Yeah. And there was a there was a little exploit we figured out three <laughs> streams in, three streams into Tech It, uh, mm -hmm. and there was there was a little item called the automatic crafting table, <sighs> and it turns out if you put an item in the automatic crafting table and mined the automatic crafting table, then two would pop out. Yes. Uh -oh. Two of that item. And not only that, but that's that paired uh, paired with another item in the game called an energy condenser, um, which <laughs> basically like there's this mod that attributes value to every item in Minecraft. So a cobblestone yeah. block has so a value. Is, of, so this is tech it with the equivalent exchange mod. That's right. Yeah. So like a cobblestone block will have a value of one, and a diamond will have a value of like eight thousand. Yes, yeah, like eight thousand. And if you and if you put a diamond in the energy condenser and fill it up with a bunch of other low value stuff, you can basically just generate. Yeah. More. So one diamond would be eight thousand cobblestone. Exactly. Or it would be like you know ten gold or, or whatever. Yeah. And there are some items that have like a a value, an EMC value is what it's called of like. What, 80, millions, thousand, millions, millions. Yeah, millions. dark matter, red yes. matter. And this, the problem with the mod is that it's all just lossless conversion. Yeah. Like, you don't lose anything. You just yeah. get you just get 8,000 cobblestone It's equivalent exchange. Yeah. yeah. So you could just get, like, a high-value item, put, like, a bit of glass or anything you need in the energy condenser and just make millions of it. Yeah, like, it was, like, it's, it's great for building. Like, if you, if you want to build something really big and you can't be fucked going out mining cobblestone, yeah. like, you just, you know, throw a diamond in the energy condenser, get a few stacks of cobble, yeah. and then, and then you take what you up, need. And then you can put, like, another diamond back in to yeah. get the yeah. rest of it, and it's yeah. all stored. Yada, yada. But basically, yeah, you, you guys figured out a bunch <laughs> of fucking <laughs> exploits. We figured out broken, huh? exploit. to duplicate this shit, and we... we <laughs> aptly named it the business machine <laughs> this is very <laughs> good <laughs> and so we would regularly just i mean we were obviously just doing it for content and everything yeah, was revolving right, around right. bits uh, and we were improving everything but like we got a bit cheeky with the business machine and it was kind of got to this point where anytime we needed anything at all <laughs> we were just like surely we just whip yeah, out the business got, machine, <laughs> machine and <laughs> we got so complacent with it <laughs> exactly yeah. and uh, you know as you can expect when you're kind of cheating like that the uh the game sort of loses yeah. its magic. The integrity of the game has been completely thrown out the window. Yeah. There's one route you can take with Ticket that just makes the game so boring. And yeah. it's the yeah. it's the like magic route where you you know, you, you focus on filling up the energy condenser and filling up that book where you can pull anything out yeah and it just makes the game so shit. Yeah. Because everything is way too A easy. A lot of people don't play with EE. E. Yeah, well, we were, we were playing the OG version, and uh, yeah, there were definitely a lot of exploits. But I mean, <laughs> it was this very fun. Yeah, you were trapped in a fucking obsidian box, and you had let's, techno blades. Let's, let's talk about let's <laughs> talk about <laughs> everything. Because Ticket had so many shenanigans. It began with the idea that there were different teams, and we'd all kind of set up our base and have a business that we were going to grow. Yeah, uh, it was yourself and Connor eats pants. Uh, yeah. and, and Ty, I believe, as well, sort of right. started in the mix. And I, I think I don't even remember what the fuck we were doing. You got. <laughs> Well, what were we making? I don't know, but what what I do know is that it was myself and Cryos on a team together. Yeah. Oh, you were bottling, you were bottling swag. We, we you were just selling swag. Um, no, yeah, our, our company was called Clout Co. Right. Uh, the joke being that you know we're, we're big YouTubers, we have some clout, uh, and we're gonna bottle it and sell it <laughs> to to all of these puny S and P live streamers. Um, kidding, obviously, they were getting more views than us at the time, but you know, it was a funny joke. So me and Cryo set up this base, and on the very first stream, Schlatt and Connor decide to just move in and start paying rent in our base, yeah. um, and you know, with all these funny bits, all this funny improv, and you know, eventually we get to the point where you guys have a base and we have a base, and we start interacting. I think one of the funny, like the first funny interactions we really had was when uh, we started needing food uh, desperately. Myself and Christ, we were running very low on food, and hunger was a serious issue. And so we go over to uh, Schlatt's base to see what's going on, and we join his VC, and we just start begging for for Wagyu steak, Wagyu scraps. Steak. For and Wagyu. at this point, I had not, I've, I'd never had Wagyu before. No, so I didn't even know what it was, <laughs> but I knew it was probably pretty tasty. Yeah, and so. I said, okay, you want some Wagyu fits? Yeah. Why don't you take a step inside my Wagyu hut? That's right. And so I built a, a very small <laughs> enclosure yeah. out of wood. And I said, okay, Fitz, come on in. Mm -hmm. And it was me and Fitz, and we, we just 
you know, there was there was a ritual that you <laughs> well, had to do. You dug a hole in the ground and I got in the hole. <laughs> yeah, you're then, stuck in the, like one block <laughs> below one us. One block below. Yep. And then you and Connor sort of just stood above me, just throwing, mm. just showering me with meat. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and humming. Uh, and like turning the lights on, <laughs> uh, and I was like, you know, this yeah, shit this was like, fun. this yeah. shit was pretty fucking like, you know, we were, just, we were just literally, it felt like I was reliving my like childhood fantasy of being in the Yogg's cast because it yeah. really was just goofy improv in a Minecraft right. setting, um, that everyone was playing along and it was, it was very fun. I got my Wagyu, I go home. The next big thing I think that happened on the Take It server was this, uh, Technoblade incident. Mm-hmm. Um, which I mean, you can walk me through the planning of that. Yeah, sure. We had, I I forget why I wanted him here, but we it was because well, of Minecraft. Monday. Yeah, Mike, he, he was, was winning every winning Minecraft every Monday. Week. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like something had happened in my company with Schlatt and Co. And so I felt like I had been wronged in some way by by because we were competing, right? That's you had right. Cloud Co. There was another there was another company, and we were competing for something. Yeah, right. That was a general idea. And so I wanted to get an edge on my competitors. So I call, I, I let everybody down into this obsidian box. I had them all <laughs> teleported there. Yeah. Um, and deep and then, underground. <laughs> yeah. Deep underground. And then I, and then Technoblade just joins the server and starts, and he's, he's completely decked out in the equivalent exchange armor. Like you d- can't die. High power gear. Yeah. You, you call him on your phone. You like pretend to call yeah, him on your yeah, phone. So like all we all we know is we're gathered in this like intense obsidian box, wondering what Schlatt has in store for us. And then we just hear, okay, I'm just gonna call someone real quick. <laughs> Technoblade has joined the server. Yep. He spawns in. He's got a laser in his hand. <laughs> And like, there's this moment of silence when everyone's just registering what's going on, and then he just starts firing at us. <laughs> yeah. And the entire call, there were about like ten or yeah, ten to fifteen people in the voice there. channel. It was an event. And we're just screaming as Technoblade slaughters <laughs> us, um, which is very funny as well. So yeah, I mean, it was kind of just this this fun little burst of, um, I guess, more bit related Minecraft content. Yeah, it was fun yeah, to explore. That was really fucking fun, dude. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd, I'd love to even more than SMP live like that. That shit is something I still get questions about because everybody who watched it was, ba- was like in love with it. Yeah. Pretty much. And I was too. Let's yeah. do it again. I love it too. It's definitely, um, it's not for everyone. I don't think some people yeah. I think really struggle with like, uh, the balance of like what's a bit and what's right. actually focused on the game. Cause I think like, yeah, yeah. you know, when you are playing on a server, you do want to make progress and you do want to feel like you're mm-hmm. playing the game. Like not everyone can just get a high off of improvising all the time um but man when it worked it was like magic yeah it, it was, was fun so was i hope really i hope we revisit and do something like that again in the future I should. yeah i feel do. like i feel like through smp live and a lot of really just the the culture around that stands are everywhere now on twitter a lot <laughs> yeah. of smp live stands i'd say so what do you think about stand culture because you recently did a face reveal and was it yeah, like man. the hour after your face reveal, you did a tweet and every single reply was a picture of your face? Yeah, it yeah. was it was something else. It was it was very, very unusual because mm-hmm. I had I think I, I face revealed it. Everything kind of happened at the wrong time. Right. So it was late September and TwitchCon was about to happen. And so I figured, you know, I'm going to TwitchCon, right? I should probably just show my face. And so there was a at the conclusion, basically. You know, my character in SMP Live kind of had a bit of an arc, right? And at where, where I thought it was a fitting conclusion to this series, I just, you know, at, right at the end, I just, hey, right, this is what I look like. Sure. And so, yeah, you bet an hour after that, uh, everybody on Twitter who was responding to anyone's tweets in the SMP Live sphere had my face as the as the profile picture and it wasn't even like the same picture they went through the video and oh, got yeah. their own special slat pose. oh yeah they had there were hearts around it the flower everything. crowns yeah because yeah. i was hot right I was, <laughs> just, I was really really attractive yeah and so and so well, just, can you blame him you know no, like that's the no, thing I, I, don't, I don't blame him. <laughs> i don't blame him but it, it freaked me out because yeah. you know it, it's not something people are really built to handle no um and at the same time, I was trying to, you know, uh, be social at TwitchCon, and I'd never met any of these guys in person. Yeah. And so it, it kind of. Mm-hmm. What yeah? What was TwitchCon like overall for you as an experience? It was kind of rough because mm-hmm. 
I was not comfortable with my face being out there. I wasn't, I haven't, I hadn't quite built a, a rapport hmm. IRL with, with any of these guys yet. And so it was, it was kind of a rough experience. Would you say these guys, do you mean like, like, yeah, like Carson okay. and, and all the people who are now lunch club. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just and us as well. Yeah, yeah. I guess that was, that was when you met us as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember you being at our, uh, you know, famous TwitchCon party and you know I yeah. knew that you didn't drink or anything so a couple times throughout the night I'd be like how are you feeling like what do you reckon about the situation we're in and you were just like yeah no I've never experienced anything like this before and right. I was like are you okay like and you're like yeah no I'm fine I remember, just, I remember computer club dude I wasn't yeah. ready for it yeah. I remember right. seeing you for the first time when you got on the party bus with everybody yeah. else we went to the zoo and you, were, you looked I remember looking at you and you were you, I was Gen bewildered you, dude because I had never been <laughs> on a you looked you looked really like uncomfortable yeah I, like I was for, a little for, uncomfortable for pretty much the entire trip. I was trying to, I was just trying to see where I fit into everything. And yeah. I, you know, I'm going to admit, I'm going to meet the misfits for the first time. Right. <laughs> and so they show up on a fucking party <laughs> bus. That's the windows are completely blacked <laughs> yeah, out. Blacked the out. bus, I walk in and it's got its own fucking atmosphere. I was just fucked up. The, you yeah, were, you were not even asleep. conscious. <laughs> and so I walk in and I sit down and right across from me, I don't know who most of these people are. And, you know, hand comes out. Hey, I'm Swagger Souls. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's a very That's cool me. experience. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm sure in a lot of ways, like it probably was cool, but definitely yeah. also, um, you know, when you're meeting any new group for the first time or you're getting acclimatized to any social situation, like, you, at least for me, I always kind of want to take a back seat and kind of, how do these people work? You want to figure yeah. out how they work first before you start mm -hmm. putting yourself prodding. out there. Yeah. Uh, um, I like prodding first and then I get to see how they work. Yeah, you kind of like poke people and see, you know, how they react to certain things. Call them a faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Can they take a joke? You know, things like that. Um, and, so, I mean, makes so, yeah, we, and then we had the Australia trip basically right after yeah. that. And that was, that was but a you little had fun for that. Yeah, no, that was a, that was a better experience because yeah. it was just more casual. That was you know, so much There fun. was less going on. Yeah. Less PAX social was, pressure. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't even think we went to PAX at all. It no. was no. just us chilling. At just us chilling. We went camping, which we talked about. Oh, the yeah. Last yeah, time yeah that was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting experience. <laughs> yeah. And now this is kind of our third time uh, all coming together. Um, yeah. And, uh, Boston and LA, and it um, feels feels just like home. You feels know? just like home. Lunch Club X Misfits. I'm a fucking stoner mm. now. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I ship it, dude. dude I shit. Yeah. Right. You guys I are you guys it. are rubbing off on me. I'm gonna become <laughs> racist next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right after the Schlatt hit the joint, I just said like another life ruined. Let's go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We've got another one, boys. Um, no, of course. I'm sure, I'm sure that Schlatt's not gonna go home and start. Uh, smoking weed every day. It's no, we don't. Surely we don't not. It, it took me at least a couple years with the Misfits to get there. So you yeah. got you got plenty of time. Um, you've been taking a bit of a break recently from, uh, uh, well, at least live streaming and a couple other things. Was that just to kind of deal and dissect that pressure from? Um, For the most part, yeah. yeah. Um, it's been kind of rough since then, uh, trying to get back into the rhythm. Because yeah. I've, you know you've said this countless times fits, but like it's very momentum based. It's like you're yeah. pushing a car up a hill. Right. And yeah. so the, the second you, you start to, you know, slow down, or slow stop. down or, or give it like a week. That's when, that's when it can start to slip away. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it, I'm trying to take my time, and, mm. you know, feel things out and then I'll come back when I'm feeling a little more comfy, I guess. Absolutely. Um, but it's mostly just been a, a break from streaming. So yeah. I'm still mm -hmm. on YouTube. I'm still, you know, I'm still putting stuff out there. It's just the live aspect has been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The live aspect's definitely different. Um, yeah. And yeah, once you do start taking a break, it's very easy to be like, you, you, your hand kind of hovers over the go live button and you're like, no, yeah. I just, I don't, I don't feel yeah, like I can't, I can't do it. You know, yeah. um, I can definitely relate to that. Although I also think that it's very smart that you've just decided that you needed to take some time. I've done very much a similar yeah. thing lately. Um, and you know, I mean, you you had such success last year, and you know you're still very successful now. Like people are wondering, what Schlatt up to? Like what's Schlatt gonna do yeah. next? You can afford to take a bit of time, you right. know, just figure right. it out. Definitely pays to just stop and just examine how far you've come, and then figure out where you want to go from here. Yeah, and I I have been hundred percent, you know, looking at my situation and and saying, okay, what what went wrong here, and what can I afford to to fix? So, for mm -hmm. example, I think it's very unhealthy that. We work out of the same space we relax at and we yeah. sleep at. That's yeah. why you separate your office and bedroom. Yeah, when 100%. the when the misfits got an office, that's why I work from the office because it's like I would be at home 
streaming all day and then it's like there's no separation there and as soon as i started working at the office just that ritual of driving home after streaming was enough to get me in that rhythm of like all right now it's time to relax yeah yeah uh and it it you know you stop working and then you just roll into bed yeah right Mm -hmm. uh i think that's you know it's good to have that separation. Yeah, you, guys you, start, be, you guys yeah. started in a house, right? Yeah, yeah. starting in the bedroom. These guys did, yeah. So how, how was, when you guys got the Misfits house at first, how would you say it compares to the office setup you guys have? Well, it's like you're living in a dorm room, you know, yeah. essentially. I mean, we had our shared space. We had, a, you know, our living room, our kitchen, um, and all of that. But it didn't feel like it was very personally mine. It didn't feel like it was very personally anybody's. It was all kind of communal. So right. you go upstairs, you're in your room, you, you do your work right next to your bed, you go to sleep, the lights are still on, your fucking monitor's still going, and, you know, oh, wait, did I get a message? I have to check something. Yeah. You're going back out, you, you can't get sleep. Yeah. You know, it's... Very it, consuming, it, it, it seemed it like. Very, it, it very much felt like I was living in a college dorm while yeah. I was there. And now, and having your own place, I got my own place, now I have an office separated from a bedroom, I have my kitchen, and, and everything's mine. So... Yeah. Ever since I got there, like work wise, it's been way better for my mental health. How did you feel about the Misfits house, uh, Mason? Looking back, like, what was your experience living there? I mean, it was cozy, but like, it's no different to being at home because I was still like playing and streaming in my room. Yeah. But I don't know, like, I've never really played in an office. Or streamed in an office. True. I mean, you've always been a bedroom gamer, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. Wasn't too much yeah. Different. That's the thing. Mason and I moved from a parent's house to the misfits house. Mm. So it wasn't that much of a change. Mm. Yeah. I think the main thing about the misfits house and about any house in general, when you're living with your friends is just, you know, people have different personalities and people want different things. And some people are very social and some people just want to like go home and just be in their room, you know? So like Like me, (laughs) you mean, Always, I said like me. Oh, like you, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know, my door just, was always locked. Yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> just conflicting uh, things going on, and like, uh, I don't know. It just it, it makes it more complicated, especially when you throw in the work element. Yeah. Um. So I think it's pretty good that we're now at a place where it's more like, yeah, let's. let's everyone, have our, everyone needs their own space. Yeah. If you're if you're working, like if you're in a group, content houses are odd, because if you have no place to go to receive, like your bedroom is like your temple, but it's also your workstation. And your roommates are also your friends, but they're also your, your co-workers. Yeah, right. So it's like your, your friends are also two other things, and then your bedroom is also your office. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and it, gets, it, gets a little bit, it gets a little bit complicated. And yeah. obviously, normally when you live with your friends, it's like during the day, you will go to work, you know? Like yeah. everyone, everyone has that separation away from each other every day. But when you work with your friends and you also live with those same friends, mm-hmm. yeah. there is no separation ever. And you're gamers, so there's just yeah. Uber Eats bags yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. Fucking yeah. <laughs> we had a wall, like, dude. We had a wall of like Uber Eats bags every week. Yeah. Towards, was... the, towards the end, we started getting groceries and I would cook shit. But then nice. by that point, it was just pretty much me and Toby living there. Mm. Mm. Although despite everything, there are some very, very fond memories created. Oh, yeah. oh incredibly. You know, when, sure. when Jay sh- threw the tortilla, I uh, filled with ketchup at the the white the white uh, cabinet when you wrote cunt on the marble bench and and literally seared the word in and, it, and <laughs> the, it, he, he wrote it in with with ketchup and the acetic acid ate away the gloss oh, on the shit. marble bench yeah. so it just said cunt wait, just wait. all it, it, as big as can be we had to cover it up with computer parts for, <laughs> for inspection. inspection yeah yeah i mean what as else? much as like we're all glad to have our own space now i don't think any of us would uh, like take back the time nah, of Misfits no, House. No, no, I wouldn't no trade regrets. my current house for yeah. Misfits House at all. Yeah, and I, you know, eventually we will have a uh, a space to to commune at once more. Mm. It's just uh, our office is now is now gone. Absolutely, but enough about houseless and office. Enough about our future. Like, I want to know what's next for Schlatt. What's like, next what's, for you? Schlatt? What's on the cards? Like, besides <laughs> marijuana. Besides <laughs> just addiction, smoking weed every single day. <laughs> um, no, but. Like, that was a I, – I really liked your point, Toby, about, like, yeah, you have friends, but, like, you still go to work, right? And yeah. so um, I noticed uh, when I was at my most productive was when I still was in school or still, mm. you know, was, was working an internship, like a nine-to-five. And I'd come home and I'd say, okay, here's the time when I can actually yeah. do the YouTube or Twitch side of things. Yeah. Um, and the second all that stuff stopped – 
which is, you know, around the time when I went to TwitchCon and around the time where, you know, I, I started slowing down a little bit. Mm. That was the time when I was like, okay, I'm doing this. This is it now, right? Like, well, this is what you, I do. You have to set your hours. Exactly. And I didn't. And I didn't. And I got up and I rolled out of bed and I said, I have all day to do this. Yeah. Why and am you, I not getting more done? Mm -hmm. And that was pretty, you know, pretty Very stressful. You, say you have to set hours for yourself. You have yeah. to actually clock in and out and, you know, work a certain amount of hours doing mm -hmm. something related to YouTube or Twitch or whatever. And then the rest of the day you go and then just clock out right. and, yeah. and relax. Yeah. What 100%. it is really is just like the jarring lack of um, structure around you, I think. Yeah. And it's like you're yeah. so used to being in a structured environment like school or work where it's like you go here, this is what I do, these are the hours, like this is my responsibility. Everything's set for you. And the, you know, when yeah. you're doing it, you have to set it for yourself. Yeah. And no exactly. one's going to hold you to it. No, yeah. no, besides you. So either... Either you don't work enough as a result of not being able to set your hours or you work way too much yes. as a result. And that balance, I think, is like just it sums up the YouTuber conundrum. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And obviously everyone jokes like, how, how can you complain? You're a YouTuber. You get to play games for a living. And yeah, that's all true. But you edit, you edit over games, man. You're like, also yeah, you're also fucking young, you know, and like you're figuring it out. And you're trying to balance your life. And yeah. it's, that's important, too. So, yep. and so, yeah, it's something I've been working on. Right. And yep. so what's, what might be next is coming down to the West coast, maybe for mm -hmm. a bit mm -hmm. and trying out a, uh, you know, like an office space area where all the lunch club guys would come to and, and get their work done. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, having my own place. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's yeah. the best way to do it. Uh, yeah. like we, we always said, even when we had the misfits house before we got that, it was, uh, the end goal was always live in, all live in the same city, but have our own places and have a communal place that we work together. Because mm. that just seems like the my healthiest idea. way to do it. My idea. I have to say, my <laughs> idea from the very beginning. Uh, no, that's a, I, that sounds very exciting for yeah, Lunch Club. Dude. I'm very, yeah. very curious to see what that, uh, what that will do. Travis is off screen, yeah, smiling. Cooper's smiling excited. Away. Big things coming down the line, I reckon. Big things. Big things. Is there anything else you want to? We have to wrap up the show. We got to get on a flight. We're, we're leaving today, uh, unfortunately. But is there anything that you wanted to say or bring up on the show? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I, mean, I, I got my spiel out about coronavirus. The Chinese um, government. We Chinese about government. That. One child policy. You know, uh, you know Kelly, I mean, look at the birth rates of, of China versus Japan and see how. You know, the coronavirus would completely wipe out Japan, but Wake up. Chi all China has to do is just get rid of the old people and they've got a fresh new country. <laughs> Wake um, up, sheeple. All right. Wake up. Exactly. Wake up. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Don't trust anyone. mouth closed. Yeah. Don't touch your face. Quarantine yourself. Build a bunker. And we'll see you guys next week. And uh, drink bye. And drink Obviously, gamers 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 <laughs> drink gamers Obviously check out Jay Schlatt. Yes. Jay Schlatt. Everywhere. Uh, check out Lunch Twitter. Club. Lunch Club. Lunch Jay Schlatt. You can Check find it out. Google. Just fucking Google it, idiots. Yes. Bye. 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 <laughs>